In this video what we're going to do is look at the means by which you can control the terrain height map with a material, um, a texture component. And this is quite a handy facility if you understand how the texture components work because then it allows you to make all kinds of different shapes quite easily. So we'll need a terrain to work with. I'll hold control key down and that'll bring a terrain in in the default grey material. This is our scene from launch. The camera's facing north. This is the terrain. We'll get rid of this uh, infinite ground plane. We don't really need that. And I'll just move the camera around so you can have a little look at the surface of this terrain. So we select the terrain, edit the terrain. This takes us into the um, terrain editor. And the control we want here is the picture control. And if you hold shift key down and click on picture, that takes you into the deep texture editor. You'll notice it's empty at the moment, but we can go into the library and bring in a texture. So we'll go to basic and we'll select this texture, basic grid. That's what we're going to work with. And the colour and the bump channels don't do anything in this. It's just the height map. What you see here becomes the height map for the terrain. This square area will become the height map for the terrain. Before we have a look at how that looks in the render, I'm going to turn that to solid. So here then and we'll just render that and then you can see that it's like a, a waffle pattern. It's quite deep so it's difficult to see inside so I'll just lower that down a bit so we can get a better view of it. So here's like a waffle pattern. Now what I'm aiming to do in this tutorial is create a facade for a building. It's going to have quite a basic structure and it's going to be based on this pattern. So if we look at this pattern now from above what I want to do is use several terrains and group them together to build the facade up uh, as, as things stand. It won't be that easy to join them up. I suppose we could try as an experiment. You could copy, paste and then move one along and you can see whether or not they're going to link up in that configuration. Although it would be possible to rotate the terrain and make them link up like that. That gives us one route, but uh, at, at this stage then we, uh, we're having to involve more terrains and I really wanted to do it in one terrain because I want to make a bit of a more complicated pattern. So we'll go back to the one terrain we've got and look at the way of modifying this so it's going to be suitable for what we want to do. So edit this terrain, hold the shift key down and click on picture. So this pattern I want an, an odd number of cells in it and I want it to go to the edge. So we'll bring in some controls and we'll look at the noise here. This is what's creating this grid. And uh, I can increase the frequency of the grid. So let's see how many cells we've got now. Oh, well, we've got half a cell here. That's not convenient. Now I can urge the whole pattern along by using the phase. So I select the phase. Right, nothing's in the phase at the moment. I'm going to go here and get the sign and they're going to take the frequency down to zero so I'm just going to use this phase component to push the entire pat along if there was any frequency component in then when I introduce phase uh, it'll make the pattern uneven because it'll be affected by the, f the phase pattern is clearer when it's in more dimensions that the, the sign patterns affecting the the underlying phase patterns affecting the pattern but if, if we reduce the frequency to zero it can't have any influence other than to move the pattern along. So in two dimensions it's going to move the pattern horizontally and vertically. If it was one direction it'd just be horizontal like that. In two dimensions it'll move it diagonally. And what this will allow me to do is to slide this into the bottom corner. So that's if I can get the that well, I don't want I don't want any of these little jaggies along the edge there. So I just wait, I just keep nudging that along until it's right in the corner. Back up a bit, right and then I'll change the scale of the noise here so that it fits in a complete square so that's an even number and that's an odd number so again I'm just trying to position it now so you can't see any along that edge so let's see check out of that check that so now we've got a 9 by 9 grid and it's got a border all the way around which is what I was aiming for obviously fine adjustments will allow you to position that border exactly but for the sake of this tutorial and so it doesn't take too long we'll say that's uh, satisfactory and th that's how it's going to look in this render so I'm going to change the structure of this slightly now 
so that uh, I've got to go edit and shift that we've got some vertical lines overlaying these so if I just drag that into component 2 and we'll go average and go into the noise here we can reduce the number of octaves so we've got then vertical lines and horizontal lines now you'll notice that the horizontal lines aren't showing and that's because there's a final filter here quantized filter that's only got one channel if we increase the number of quantization levels you get it's possible to catch sight of the other things that are going on so um, at the moment the, the, uh, the, it's a bit sharp the transition so you can spread the transition out by modifying the filter if you can remember how to modify the filter which can be a bit tricky otherwise I just reset it and start again but the aim is to get raised sections and lower horizontal sections if you want to see a preview although I warn you it can crash when you preview it so saving is important when you're working in this way hold the alt key down and click on the channel and it'll bring up the combination it'll bring up a preview that's a bit larger that you can see so it's all a bit fiddly working in the editor there so now I've got two levels got these upper level and a lower level and uh, so the idea is this can be like uh, vertical uh, struts on the building and horizontal divisions for the windows so I'll go back in there now and hold shift and edit again so the next one I'll try drag this across to this one and and we'll choose blend altitude and I'll show you the way this differs now normally blend altitude would work on the total altitude but uh, it just works the height map just gets itself from the preview window here so however the blend altitude is displayed in the deep texture editor will be what you get in your height map so if we go to the noise here and I'll increase the octaves by one it creates an interesting effect and then I'll change the filter from clip to saw wave and reset it and we can we can add some uh, interesting patterns to this to the uh, overall finish thing so this could be like a pattern on the top of the building this looks a bit compressed vertically so I'm going to halve this frequency or thereabouts what's half of two six uh, two eight six that's going to be three four one one four three so one four get that oh there you go right so let's see how that looks now uh, it is quite slow working the computer struggles a bit working with this um, in this way so uh, what the thing to do is when you've actually got your terrains is to convert them from deep texture editor generated terrains to to ordinary terrains and I'll show you how to do that in a second but this is uh, this is going to be the, the top panel for the building so I've got the the lower panel by not having that extra bit of pattern and this top panel just to add a bit of interest so what I'll do is I'll, I'll save this because as I said it can cause crashing so pan one right and then I'll look at creating a couple of sections so we've got that on one side that's generated with the deep texture editor and uh, what I'll do I'll move that out of the way go to the create menu and holding the control key down to create another terrain I'll edit this terrain and make it solid but I'm not going to use a picture in this what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal the height map from this one so if I go into this terrain now and go edit I can press control C and that will copy the height map from there and then and then I'll go into this terrain edit it and control V and that gives me the height map and because we've not gone into picture and gone into the deep text editor it's just a height map whereas this one requires calculation this one is just purely working from the height map which will still look the same but it just, is, it just allows it to operate a bit more efficiently so that's some, one panel we've got I'll just move that to one side I'll copy and paste it and then I'll drag it down so um, you can see the situation now as we're sort of building up the, the facade of the building this is the top edge I want this to continue along in just in a straightforward pattern so I go back to this terrain, edit it, I go hold shift and I'll just get rid of the final component there so we've got our grid there's a bit of an optical illusion going on there, I see like spots flashing before my eyes control C to copy the height map go into this terrain, edit it and then control V to paste the height map 
So these are just ordinary height maps and if we were attempted to go into the deep texture edit it wouldn't have any record of the pattern stored in that one there. So that's building our front of our building up, or what I propose is going to look like the front of the building. This terrain then, we've got one last thing we need to do in this and then we can get rid of it. So hold shift count and go into the editor. I'll just switch that final component on to remind me what it looks like. Now this takes us back into the library and then we can add this into the library and we're going to use this to actually provide us with the texture for the building as well. So it's going to serve two purposes. So I'll just delete that terrain now, that our source terrain, and now we've just got the terrains that we've got the height map from. And uh, I'll save that. So just do save as. And because uh, I put a number at the end of the file, it's incremented the number for me, which is quite a handy facility. Okay, that's saved. Right, I'll select both terrains, and I want the material. So I select both terrains to go into the material. And if we click on the first channel for the material, and then hold shift down and click on the name we can recover this basic grid. At the moment that is just um, an alpha channel, it's not providing any colours so actually what I'm going to do is use that to control reflection so I'll just make that grey again and I'll go into the te deep texture editor and I'll just get rid of that final one so it's this is uh, controlling reflection so uh, the the alpha channel when it's white will be the most reflection, grey will be a bit of reflection and the black section will be hardly any reflect. well no reflection at all. Um, so we can see how that looks. At the moment we've got no reflection set but we can turn the reflection up a bit and that gives us some reflection. And if we set this to parametric and then the frequency scaling factor here to 20 what happens is that will now be aligned perfectly with our terrains. So now the reflective bits are appearing on these upright supports So, and, and the other bits will just be a grey. It's a little bit uh, thick at the moment so I'll just set that down a bit so it's not as, uh, not as thick so you get the idea what we're aiming for. So that's the front panel of our building. Now, at the moment, this is very basic and it's not looking much like a building because I've not built the rest of it. So we'll add another terrain down there and then I can select, oops, without selecting the camera, group those and uh, if I can work out which way to rotate it, I can stand it on end. Okay, that's on end now. I'll lift it up and move the camera to a slightly different position and uh, you can see we've just got the default sky at the moment but uh, we'll see how things look now so obviously the, the reflectiveness of the surface and and uh, is creating a bit of an effect there for us that make it look like it's made of metal or something and uh, what we can see there's a join between these two bits of the terrain so before I do any more copying I'll try and sort that join out so it's not as obvious so I take these two terrains and lift it up a bit and see how the join looks now. I've gone too far. Go back to the view I was in, wherever it is. Just use the num numerical keys to change view. So it's just a bit easier, right? So I've shuffled that one up so you can't really see the join there. And then, likewise, if we look how much that one's overlapped, like, oh, probably a bit too much there. There we go, right, and see whether that's corrected that issue. It's a little bit thick just there, I think. I'll lower that. So we can get it so that it just looks like all the rest around it. Right. 